Got another question for the unusual organic mechanisms playlist. So this is number two. Um, hope you like the video. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, what are you playing at? Um, and as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to do it first. So first part of a definition for a curly arrow shows the movement of an electron pair. So to help me explain this um, mechanism, I'll just zoom in on what I've done here. So you can see I've highlighted the oxygen in red and the carbon in black. And I've drawn in the pair of electrons uh, that are in that bond that the curly arrow is coming from. And the reason I've done that is to show that the oxygen owns one of the electrons in that bond. Carbon owns the other one. So we've just said curly arrow shows the movement of a pair of electrons. Basically, both of these electrons are going to go under that oxygen. So that's going to do a few things. It's going to break the bond. So the um, H2O will become detached from the carbon part of the uh, structure. The carbon has effectively lost its electron. That black electron's gone onto the oxygen now. So the carbon's going to have a positive charge on it. And you'll notice the O has a positive charge. That's going to lose that charge. It's going to become neutral because it's effectively gained that black electron. So the product of all of that is what's drawn up on the screen now. So moving on to the explanation for heterolytic fission. So you can see I've colour-coded my answer. So there's two parts to the answer. Um, we'll start with fission. Fission is the breaking of a covalent bond. And the heterolytic part is the fact that both electrons have gone to the same atom. So in the case of the um, mechanism above, the pair of electrons has gone to the oxygen. That's why it's heterolytic fission. So moving on to part B, we've got an incomplete mechanism um, and we've basically got to add the curly arrows and the missing species at the end. So if you look at what you're starting with and this intermediate here, you can see that the OH is attached itself to this carbon. So what must have happened is a curly arrow from that lone pair has gone onto that carbon. You can see that the chlorine is still attached, so there's no change here. But the oxygen has gone from a double bond to a single bond with an O- on the end. You can see the pair of electrons has been shown as well. So what's happened there is the pair of electrons in the pi bond of the double bond has been repelled onto the oxygen. So then if we look at the difference between the intermediate and the final organic product, you can see that the um, single bond to the O has gone back to being a double bond and the chlorine's broken off. You see it's not on the organic product. So in terms of curly arrows, what happened there is this pair of electrons on the O- minus have gone back and reformed the double bond. So they've gone back into the middle of the bond. And to get rid of that chlorine, we've got heterolytic fission again. Pair of electrons from the bond onto that Cl and the Cl will now be a Cl minus. And if you want to put a lone pair on there, you can, you don't have to. So that was the mechanism. And then finally, what's the role of the OH minus ion in this mechanism? Well, look at what it's doing. It's donating a pair of electrons. So it is a nucleophile.